everybody. So today I'm going to be doing some port test adjustments. Um, currently I have some PVC round over on all three sides of this port. So on the top, on the side, and the bottom. So it's around around and around eight and a half wide by around seven and a half high currently. So the port area is fairly large. I was about to get loud in a second. But anyway, so what I'm going to be doing now, I normally didn't do on the port adjustments before video of how it metered with the PVC taped over as well as with it not taped over. So that's what I'm gonna be doing first is testing that to see how I differ taking out one round over and see how the metering results change. So I am inverted like before and I'm staying inverted as of now. Um, a little more musical, not as loud inverted. Uh, I'll put some videos of you in the future, of course, with the results of that. But so far, it's given me a little more bandwidth, um, musical range, as well as a little bit more lows, but not too much more, just because uh, the way the box is tuned to with large port area. So big ratio, still really peaky, but a little more musical with it being inverted. Anyway, I'll talk about more inverted stuff later. So at this second, I'm about to do, find out what it meters with the port in here currently first. So I'll go from there. So I, I always use a, a little SSA SPL meter whenever I do these tests. So that's one thing that you always want to have if you ever do tests, if you can, because by ear is really hard. So I try to put this stuff on video as I'm doing it just because, hey, it's a hobby. And hopefully I can teach people things on the way, along the way, as I do it. So I'm going to do like I always do if you watch my other videos. I suggest to watch them if you haven't. Um, same spot. For every location um, let me go ahead and make sure everything's set right and go to bluetooth on my ipod so i can do my frequencies make sure my bass knob is all the way up and i'm going to do volume 20 like i always do and then i'm going to see the difference in results with removing a port uh, pvc round over so this time i'm going to be removing instead of adding to see how my output changes so this kind of stuff i do on my own normally not on camera but i figured i'd share this on for you guys to see so you guys can see how important the round overs could be or how much they may be hurting my system depending on the port area of course so we'll find that out in a second let's turn the meter on you guys ever have any cardio questions feel free to ask whether i'll answer or others be glad to so all right here we go do my first sweep and then afterward i'll go in the back and work on the port and see how it goes up or down so doing a little bit more fun today on the video All right, so we'll remember that number, 18.56 at 42 hertz. So my frequency peak sealed is right at 42 hertz, 41 to 43 hertz range, which is a, is a really good peak. It's not too high, so it ain't going to be like in the 50 hertz ranges. So low 40s is a good peak for, for uh, fourth orders. If it was ported enclosure, that would be a high peak. Uh, it just depends on the residence of your vehicle. All right, so now I'm going to go to the back and take this port off. Oh, that's a little loud. And we're going to see the difference. So here we go. So what I'm about to do now may take a little bit, but it'll be all right. So what I'm about to do is tear away my port. So one thing I want to mention this is remember every enclosure is different. The concept is the same. So anything to smooth out the area where your air velocity is on your, your wall or your no wall, your ported enclosure, your six order, etc., is really brilliant. A lot of boxes aren't like mine where you have no port length but I just have it that way because it's easier being big ratio. I can just tune it by just doing the leg length of the two by fours, two by sixes, and the PVC five inch, four inches. So that's pretty much the concept in my concept of uh, my band pass. But if I was a smaller ratio, my ported enclosure wasn't over six cubes, say it was a three cube, so it was a three to one, then I would probably be putting a leg length of at least like 15 on here, but I'm not doing that since it's big ratio and I have the cubic space. It's all about cubic space for your size. So what I'm about to do is take this off, take the tape off on this layer, and this is how I do my tests. So I normally wouldn't put this kind of stuff on video, but you know what? I'm just going to do it because you guys watch all the time, and if you care to see all the results, then why not learn something? So going back to tape. So I use tape because I can remove it, and it's not permanent. So what I'm about to do is 
unscrew the three screws I have in here that are port for my roundover. I have PVC that I use that I cut in half. So what I'm literally doing is I have a couple of screws on each side of this pipe. I screwed in onto some 2x4. You see the 2x4 behind it. And then what happened was I removed, I added the PVC over the 2x4. So let me get in on the other side. Let's do this real quick. So this is the one that's really tricky because you have to identify where your screws are and you have a tight spot. So smaller ports are a little harder to see than the big ports for this. So usually the more system cone area you have, the bigger your port. And most fourth orders are normally around, I would say, the uh, 40 to 50 percent cone area range. But uh, bandpass enclosures are usually a little bit more just because of the way pressure buildup is and they're tuned higher. So you need more port area to be tuned higher, if that makes sense or not. All right, so what I'm trying to do is identify where I put the screws in here, and I'll just talk while I do it, I guess. I don't normally do this. But anyway, so what, what? another thing that you guys want to consider with port adjustment is if you don't, if you can design a, your port enclosure or your bandpass enclosure around your port to a concept of being able to adjust your port so you can make it like a burnt box versus a non-burnt box. That's a really brilliant idea to do. Another thing I've seen people suggest was uh, doing big ports, so arrow ports instead of slot port, because the arrow ports you can adjust. So say you wanted to do an 8 inch flare versus a 10 inch flare, and that can adjust to like a burp box versus a non burp, and then you can plug it. So concepts like that. So see what I got here? I got my pipe I just took out. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's my phone was in reverse, but... There's the concept. Might have been upside down. Oh well, anyway, so I had a piece of wood in here. So before I take that piece of wood out, I'm just gonna meter, just out of curiosity, cause why not? So let me go ahead and do that real quick. So I took the roundover off, just to see. So just that piece of wood in there. So before I would normally reduce my leg length width wise, but this time I'm trying it height wise reason I did that is so I have a bigger gap here so I can kind of poke my head in here and physically see it plus if I'm doing camera shots or just doing some kind of tweaks in the box but that's another concept so now I'm gonna go see how it meters with that piece of PVC out see how it does different real quick we'll find out shouldn't take long I'm hoping it goes up but you never know All right, so my peak went up one frequency before it was 42, now it's 43, so that does make sense. As you open your port up, you actually gain frequency ranges. Um, so your frequency range will be depending on how your response is of your, um, your port area. So as you open your port up, it's bigger, it makes it a wider peak range because it just, you have a, your tuning goes up. Anyway, so I went from 18.56 to 18.75. So 42 hertz to 43 hertz, and I went up about a quarter of a dB. So that means that me removing that PVC pipe, I actually gained. So one good thing about this on low volume is you can do so many tests and get different varied results. But when you go into high volume, you have to worry about heat, and you got to worry about your voltage drop and everything. So I always do low volume tests first and get kind of on a close ballpark and then go do a full tilt and then compare that full tilt with another change if I do anything to compare. So always do low volume tests first just because I'm not gonna waste a lot of battery reserve and get coil heat temperature rise, everything like that when I got other things to work on. So I'd rather spend less time worrying about that. So low volume burps like I just did works. All right, so now let me go ahead and take these screws out and we'll see if I gain or lose. So it's just a couple of screws I used in here. So those screws were literally just holding that piece of two by four in there wedged. So what that did was give me a little bit of a port area block route. 
so it blocks some of the port area so I haven't done this test yet so this is all new to me while I do it so nothing's staged here so now my port area went up so it's like eight and a half wide by like nine tall eight and a half about the same yep eight and a half by eight and a half instead of by like six before all right we'll see so it could peak higher too so i'm gonna guess it's 45 or 46 hertz but we'll see we'll see how it does so this concept is hopefully teaching you guys something about how port area affects your output and this can be the same for every enclosure and then i'll end the video and stay tuned for more to come all right so we'll see if i gain or lose for everybody still watching thanks for always watching by the way hit the like button if you enjoy this content anything you want to suggest feel free so let's find out All right, so my peak didn't change and I took that piece of wood out and you see how I went down maybe about 0.1, maybe 0.2. So that shows that my port area is about where it's happy. So I went from 0.56 to 0.75 to 0.65. So right around ballpark of where my port area needs to be. So that does show that I am close to where I need to be, but removing that PVC, I gained a little bit. So that PVC could be something that I can look into maybe lowering. So instead of it being at the depth it was, I'll show you the concept I'm talking about. So instead of it being literally flush, I could reduce that a little bit. Got a little bit of grass stuck on it from on the grass, sorry. But what I could do instead is, it's kind of tight, but it works. So um, it's not the prettiest, but it works. So I could do something where it would round over on a smaller scale. So instead of the depth being down, I can go up a little bit on depth. So cut a little bit of this off. So I'll cut some of this part off of it. And then that would raise my lip up slightly. And that would cause my port height to be slightly lower. And that could be tenths that you can gain, but every tenth counts. So if I gain, let's say 0.2 just by doing that, lifting that up, that's a little bit of gain. Um, and when you start getting into really the most output you want out of your enclosure, even if you're not SPO, a gain is a gain. So. And that goes for everything. Um, stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching Jacob Vile out. And that's part for port adjustment for my port.